Hello, welcome to Katrina's Creations. This is a tutorial on a simple pattern for a sweater. You can make it sleeveless or you can put any length of sleeves on it. It is ideal for a beginning knitter because um, the pattern is pretty much up to you. It's very easy to build upon. So the first thing you're going to want to do is choose your yarn and your needle size. If this is your very first sweater that you're making, I would recommend worsted weight and you're going to use probably a size 7 to 8 um, needle. But you could use it with any type, but that's that would be the large, a, a very comfortable one to try to knit your first sweater with. You're going to want to knit a 4x4 four four swatch in the stitch that you're going to do the sweater in. So if you're going to do the, the sweater all in garter stitch, you want to do your uh, four by four sample in garter stitch. If you're going to do it with a pattern, such as one of the sweaters I'm going to show you is a little shell pattern. It's a little um, cable, like a little small, it's called yarn over cable. You're going to knit your swatch in this so that you can knit it true to gauge. And then what you're going to do after you knit your 4x4, you're going to use a ruler and you're going to measure how many stitches, especially across, how many stitches does it take to equal one inch. You're going to then take and measure your torso. You're going to measure the largest portion of your torso, torso um, whether it's the bust or the hips or the waist, your widest point. This is a box, it's not a shaped sweater. It's going to be basically a box sweater. Shaping takes um, a lot of like decreasing, it's a little bit more advanced. This is a very easy sweater uh, to make for, like I said, for a beginning knitter or your, for your first attempt. So you're going to measure the largest part of your body. In my case, the bust and the hips are the same. I would like to say I have an hourglass shape but it's more Michelin man, it's it's more like this. So, uh, but anyway, I put together an, ex an example. These are not my measurements, but I thought I would do this as an example. You're going to, if you measured your, your widest circumference and say it is 40 inches, I think it's close so you can see it. So say it is 40 inches. You're going to then divide 40 inches by two. That will become your front and back. So your front and back are going to be 20 inches each. Then you're going to multiply that by the number of stitches that you determined per inch. So if you found out that your pattern is five stitches within an inch, you're going to multiply five times the 20. So you're going to know that the front is going to be 100 stitches wide, the back is going to be 100 stitches wide. So that's the formula for figuring it out. Then to begin with, like I said, you're going to start, if you're doing something with a worsted weight, it's more than likely going to be a size 7 or 8 needle. Whatever size needle you're using for the body of your sweater, you want to get a start out with a needle that is 2 to 3 sizes smaller. Um, unless you're doing a sweater in garter stitch, if you're doing it in stockinette, which is like this, where it's smooth, if you don't have ribbing at the bottom, your sweater is going to roll. It's not going to lay flat. If it's all in garter stitch, um, for instance, like this sweater that I'm making here, this is, um, I've shared this with the people in my knitting podcast, but this is a top down sweater and the body of it is all garter stitch like this. It doesn't need a hem or a ribbed end because it's not going to roll. But if it's done in anything other than garter stitch, you do need to put ribbing at the bottom or something. It just stabilizes. It gives it a little bit of firmness so that it doesn't like roll up on you. So that said, you're going to want a needle that is two to three sizes smaller than what you're going to knit the body with. And you're going to cast on the same amount of stitches that you would do the body with, but you're doing a smaller needle. So it will be a little tighter and you're going to knit a rib stitch. A rib stitch is generally knit purl. The, the basic one is knit purl, knit purl, knit purl, and when you come back you do the same thing so that all of your knit stitches are stacked together, all of your purl stitches are stacked together, 
it will look, let me show it to you on this sweater. Here's, here's, this is just a small rib stitch. It's like what your sock, um, your sock ankle parts would be like up around your leg. It's the stretchy part. That's what a rib stitch does. It is stretchy. That's why you want to use a smaller needle. Uh, if you did it in the same size needle as the rest of the body, and I've done that before, so I've learned by mistake. Um, but if you do your ribbing in the same size needle, it tends to be a looser knit, so it bunches up and looks very bulky and clunky. So that's why you do it in a smaller needle. And um, the reason for that is because you're going knit, purl, knit, purl, you're switching back and forth. The, knee, the stitches, like I said, are not as tight together as they would be if you're doing a stockinette stitch where you're knitting all the way across or purling all the way across. So just that little bit of, of change from moving your, your yarn from the front to the back to form the knitting and the purling stitches can make the stitches a little bit looser. So like I said, go down two to three sizes and you're going to start, you're knitting a rectangle. So I don't have any samples right now knitted for this, so I've, I've got paper. So you're going to knit a rectangle. Here's your rectangular sweater. You're going to start at your ribbing stitch and you can make it as wide as you want. I would make it at least an inch and a half. So an inch and a half from the bottom to the top. Then you're going to change to your regular size needles that you were going to use the body with. Knit it all the way up. And then when you get to the top, you're going to once again switch to the smaller needles and you're going to put about an inch to an inch and a half of ribbing again at the top. This sweater is going to, and I will show you some samples of it, it forms what's called a boat neck sweater. This is not something with a fancy collar or anything. It's just a slash, it's, it's like a slash where your head goes through. So it's not a fitted collar. If you're more advanced, you can always incorporate that. But um, for the first sweater, you're not doing any short rows or anything like that. It's just going to be a straight uh, cut across the shoulders. So that's if you are if you're going to make a sweater with sleeves, this is what you want to do. Now if you want your sweater to be sleeveless, you're going to start at the bottom here, do your rib stitches, then you're going to knit up. When you get to where your sleeves would be, you need to again use a tape measure, measure the circumference of your arm all the way around. And again use the same formula that we started out with, you're going to um, figure what your circumference is, divide it by two for the front and the back, and multiply it by the number of um, stitches that you determined per inch. But right now you're concerned with this part. So say your circumference of your arm is, say it's 20 inches, divided by two is going to be 10. So 10 inches from what would be the top of the sweater, you are going to start rib stitching right on the edge. So in other words, you might be doing stockinette all the way across, but when you get to the ends on both sides, you're going to do maybe anywhere from three to five garter stitches all the way up to the top, and then you're going to do your rib stitch across. What this does, it just makes it so your sleeve is finished. Otherwise, you're going to have a, a end that's going to curl, okay? So when you have two of these, or if you're making the ones with, with sleeves on your sweater, two of this variety, you're going to take both parts, put them right side together, and you're going to stitch in from the wrong side your shoulders. You can make it as short or as wide. If you want a wide open shoulder with just a little bit together, um, at the shoulder seam, it's entirely up to you how wide you make the shoulder seams. You can make it tight, you can make it wide. It, like I said, it's your sweater, you can do it however you would like. So if you have done the sleeveless variety, after you attach the shoulders, you're then going to sew from the armpit area down, attaching you know, both of them together, and you're done. You then have your sleeveless sweater. The, the ribbing at the top finishes the neckline. The ribbing on the sides finishes the arms. So at that point, you would be completely done. 
this, if you are putting sleeves on it, you're not going to sew the sides down yet. You're only going to attach the top parts at the shoulders. Then you're going to lay it down right side up facing you. Um, you're going to pick up stitches. Like we said, if we're using this formula and you have determined that your, your um, sleeve circumference is 20 inches, you're going to divide it by the two. So you know it's going to be 10 inch allowance on the front, 10 inch allowance on the back. And again, say you had five stitches per inch, you know that that's going to be 50 inches to do the front, 50, I mean, 50 stitches to do the front, 50 stitches to do the back, and you want it to be over a 10 inch period, uh, 10 inch area. So when you lay your pattern down where the shoulders are connected, here's a shoulder, here's a shoulder, you're going to want right at that shoulder seam, you're going to measure down, hold up, I can see, you can see it. You're going to measure down from the shoulder seam 10 inches to know where the, the uh, sleeve is going to end. And I would mark that with like just stick a straight pin in it so that you know where it is. And then you're going to pick up 50 stitches to the center and 50 stitches to the end of the other armpit. Then from there, you're going to begin, like I said, you want to pick those stitches up from the right side. Otherwise, your seam will show up on the wrong side. Where you've, where you've picked up the stitches, you'll have a little line, and you don't want that. So you go from the, the right side, pull it, the stitches up through the right side. And um, then you can proceed knitting the sleeves as long as you want, whether you want them um, just a short sleeve, three-quarter length, or all the way down to your wrist. You can do either. Now, right before you get to your wrist, again, you're going to transfer to the smaller needles and you are going to do at least an inch to two inches of rib stitch so that it, it stays, um, it just gives you the finished edge. If you know how to do an eye cord bind off, you could do that too, but you want something that's going to keep the sleeves from rolling. Now, that would be the basic sweater. You then would would cast off your stitches and you simply sew underneath from under the arm and straight down on both sides and there your sweater is finished. Now those type of sleeves are going to be boxy looking. They are going to like hang down. If you want them tapered, I've drawn a picture here, if you want them tapered then you are going to when you here's where you would attach at the shoulder seams then on each side, as you work your way down the length of the sleeve, you're going to want to do knit two together at the edge, every couple of rows all the way down. And that will taper your sleeve so that it'll be a little bit more fitted. So that being said, let me show you a couple samples of this sweater that I have done. This sweater is a little rough looking because it's several years old. It has been worn quite a bit. It is 100% wool. I did the top just for a little bit of difference. I did a basket weave pattern in the front. Here's the boat neck collar. I'm going to hold this up so you can see it. Here's my shoulders. This does, because I'm wider than my shoulders are, um, it, it forms a little off the sleeve. My, my shoulder seams are not at my shoulders. They hang down a little bit. So if I hadn't attached the sleeves, the sweater still would have been like a dropped shoulder. It still would have hung over a little. So here is the general shape of it. Let me roll back some. Mine is almost more square than it is rectangle because I don't like real long sweaters. I have a, I have a short waist. So um, I'm a short person, so it has, I have a short waist. So this is the main body. You can see that I have ribbed at the top and I've ribbed at the bottom right there. And here's where I attach the shoulders. Like I said, you've got about an inch of ribbing, but it gives you a nice, let's make it this really like, it gives you a nice finished edge right there. Now you can see it well. That's my neck right there. And you have a nice finished edge along the collar. 
Now, in this case, I picked up uh, and made some sleeves on this. You can see where I picked up the sleeves right along the edge. I'm showing it to you on this one because there is a pattern so you can see it. Because I pulled through the front, I don't have a seam showing here. And then I just knitted straight out. I did taper the sleeves a little bit, as you can see, because I didn't want them puffy. And I want to show you also the, um, if I had picked up from the wrong side the sleeves, this is what you would end up with. See this line across here? Very long here. That's what you don't want showing on the front. So that's why you pick it up from the front, insert the needle through the front, and then pull the stitches through. So this is one example of the sweater. The other one I made, I did change the collar. This does not have a boat neck collar. Um, and I used a shell pattern. And the, where I get the ideas for these, um, you could do any kind of pattern you would like, like I did the basket weave. I used this book, and I've shown it to you before on one of my other episodes. It's a sampler afghan. And let's see if I can get the pictures so you can see. It's made of squares, and each square is a different pattern. And I have made a afghan actually in this exact same color. But inside, it has what the different squares are. And I use some of these squares as inspiration for the sweater. So the pattern that I actually picked out of this was this one right here, number 32. It's called Yarn Over Cable. And in order to do that, I used the same formula that I showed you, but I had to check the pattern to see how often the pattern repeats to form the little cables. And it's a five stitch um, repeat. So what I did when I had my little formula that I designed, I had to make sure that my stitches that I came up with for my total um, had a five, um, they were increments by five. So that it, I made it just a little bit bigger than what the numbers maybe would have come out just to incorporate the pattern. So this one, again, you can see I joined at the shoulder. It is basically rectangular or square. I'll hold back here so you can see it. There it is. The stitches on the sleeves, I did not put the pattern because it would have made my cables run in two different directions, and I just didn't think I'd like that. So I just did straight stockinette stitch. You can see where I joined it. And then there's some ribbing stitch here. The bottom of this one, I actually did not do ribbing stitch. I thought this pattern, with it being cabled, would maybe stand on its own, but it did curl. So I actually used um, a crochet. I did a little lace crochet edge to it. Plus, it turned out a little shorter than what I anticipated, and I didn't have enough yarn to do like a rib stitch with it, but I had just enough with crochet to kind of make a loose a loose um, edge to it. And I liked the edge border to wear with under or over top of a skirt. So I hope you found this tutorial helpful. And um, I have made the sleeveless form of it that I showed you, but I don't have it any longer because that was done years ago. And I don't tend to wear sleeveless things because I've got bad wings and I don't want everybody to see them. So I like to disguise them in sleeves. So most of my sweaters and, and shirts and things have sleeves to them. But um, if you were so blessed that you do not have bat wings, go for the sleeveless. Um, so anyway, I hope that you have found this helpful. And um, if you aren't a subscriber to my podcast, please click the subscription button below. And thank you for checking out this tutorial.